The Bears are traveling across the pond to the UK to take on the Oakland Raiders for the revenge game of Eddie Pinheiro and Khalil Mack. What's up guys? I'm back with the Bears prediction videos. This time we got a week 5 matchup against the Raiders in London in the UK at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, a soccer stadium which I mainly only know about because of FIFA. We're going to play in this stadium for fans across the world, which I'm really happy about to be honest, okay? Although some people, you know, they hate the aspect of, you know, this travel for the players and obviously the Raiders are getting robbed of a home game, which kind of sucks. You know, all the negative aspects aside, it's really great that you international fans get a chance to watch the Bears live because, I mean, you guys are kind of the real MVPs, you know, cheering from across the world. Like, that's honestly, like, that's crazy to me, like, how you can support a team from that far away. I mean, you guys are real diehard, so... Thank you guys for, you know, waking up so early in the middle of the night or, you know, staying late to watch the Bears and still sending still sending all of your support. So mad respect to all the international fans from France, the UK, from, you know, all of Europe and obviously other countries too. But I know that a lot of European fans are traveling to London for this game. So if you're going to this game and even if you're not, you know, mad respect to you for being an international fan. Now this is a game that I've looked forward to since September 1st of last year when the Khalil Mack trade happened, when the Raiders traded him to us because I want the Raiders to know, I want them to see firsthand what a stupid, dumb mistake they made, right? Their mistake has really helped change our entire franchise around. They've given us, you know, a superstar, the likes of which we have not had in Chicago for a long, long time. So I want John Gruden, I want their GM. I want kind of their fans too who have been criticizing the Bears, hating on the Bears. I want them to see how bad they effed up. And I want them to see what Khalil Mack can do against them. So I'm so excited to see what Khalil Mack can do against this Raiders team. His old team, which he really loved. I mean, he did love Oakland. He loved the people of Oakland. He loved his teammates. I mean, obviously he's really good friends with Derek Carr still. So it's going to be interesting to see, you know, how Khalil Mack interacts with those guys, you know. And how he plays against them because I want him to absolutely dominate. We are not going to take the Raiders lightly in this game because the Raiders are a pretty scrappy football team, okay? Any team coached by John Gruden, it is going to be a scrappy football team, play hard, you know, because John Gruden is a pretty tough coach to play for. Um, they are going to, you know, utilize all the talents on the team they have, even though they don't have, you know, the most talented squad. They do have, you know, key talent at certain key positions like. That offensive line, man, it is stacked. They got, you know, Trent, Trent Brown. They got Colton Miller. They got, you know, Incognito, obviously. They got um, their center, Rodney Hudson. They have a lot of elite talent on the offensive line. So that offensive line, really, you know, it's helped open up a lot of things for their running game, um, for Derek Carr a little bit in the passing game. Although I feel like, you know, the run game has really been the strength of this Raiders team. So this Raiders team on offense, I mean, they can do a lot of things. So... Again, our defense, we should not take this test lightly. Now, the Raiders' defense, I do have more concerns over because their passing defense ranked 27th in the NFL. It doesn't scare me that much. But we're going to probably have Chase Daniel starting this game, our backup QB, who did play pretty fine in the last game. So maybe there's not that much to worry about. But hopefully we don't get a repeat of Chase from the Giants game last year. The Chase that threw a pick six to start the game out. The Chase that could not escape the pocket at all the chase that fumbled the ball so much hopefully that chase does not come back because I mean if it does then it's gonna be a close game but I got a lot of faith in Matt Nagy and the coaching staff to put Chase Daniel in the right position to make a lot of things look easy for him so hopefully Chase is not required to do too much he's not required to play hero and this defense like I have mentioned in previous videos right the Bears defense is by far the best in the NFL I mean, it's been better than the 1985 Bears defense through four games. So with this type of defense, you can literally beat any team as long as your offense doesn't play like shit. So hopefully we can get this offense to at least be average, but I'm going to stop wasting your time. Let's get into my three keys to a Bears victory. All right, key number one is going to be to key in on this Raiders rushing attack, specifically Josh Jacobs. This is very similar to the key last week against the Vikings because like the Vikings, the Raiders... They rely heavily on the running back, Josh Jacobs, okay? The Vikings were 
a run first offense. The Raiders, although they might they may not be like run first per se, they do pass the ball a lot more than the Vikings do. They do rely heavily on the running game and their rookie running back, Josh Jacobs, okay? He has 307 yards so far, uh, two touchdowns on the ground, which is a really good number for a rookie. So Josh Jacobs, he's really been impressing so far. And that Raiders offensive line, like I mentioned, it's no joke. All the people on their offensive line, there's, I mean, they're opening a lot of holes for their running backs. And, you know, by running the ball, they're able to chew a lot of clock, control the tempo of the game, and pretty much wear the defense down slowly. They do have a couple other running backs as well. They got Jalen Richards, they got DeAndre Washington, and they also ran the ball with the receiver Trevor Davis in the last game, which he got like 72 yards or something. So John Gruden, he's going to try to run the ball in any way possible using whatever players he has to use, and he's going to stick with the run game the entire game because the run game is a big, huge part of his offense. It always has been, it always will be. That's just how he rolls. So if the run game doesn't work for him early, you can expect him to stick with it the entire game. He's not going to give up on it. So our defense, the entire game, they have to be stopping this run game, okay? I have full confidence that they will be able to do that, though, because we did that to the best rushing attack in football last week. The Minnesota Vikings, man. They were the best rushing attack in football. They could not do anything against our defensive line, you know, with our backup quarterback being out in our offense. I mean, that I guess that doesn't have much to do with it, but... Our defense, right, we were missing Akeem Hicks, we were missing some key players, and we still shut down the best rushing attack in all of football, did not allow them to do anything. So if we did that to them, why can we not stop the Raiders? I think we 100% will. Um, You got studs like Roy Robertson-Harris, you got Eddie Goldman, you got Nick Williams, like even backups playing amazing. Obviously, Khalil Mack is a run stuffer, he's amazing as well. You know, not just a pass rusher. Um, You got... All our linebackers like Danny Trevathan, Roquan Smith, who's hopefully playing. Um, he said he expects to play. I mean, they're all good against the run. So <laughs> our run defense is top-notch, probably one of the best in the entire NFL. Uh, we only allow, what, 61 rushing yards a game. So I don't expect that to change. If we can stop this run game the entire game long, make Derek Carr throw the football, I think we will win this game. Key number two is that Chase Daniel needs to stretch the field. All the easy throws that he got in the last game, right, which the Vikings kind of let him have, they are not going to be available to him in this game, okay? The Raiders, John Gruden, they're going to game plan for this. The Vikings could not game plan for Chase Daniel. They game plan for Trubisky. And although, you know, you want to say that's the same system, it's the same, you know, it's it, it shouldn't make that much of a difference, it does because they are two different quarterbacks right now, okay? Trubisky is more raw, he's more athletic, but Chase Daniel, maybe he does have you know, a better knowledge of this playbook, obviously, because he's been in the league for so long. So some of these plays that Matt Nagy really likes to run, you know, the Raiders are going to try to take that away from Chase Daniel. Like all the easy throws down the middle, those are probably not going to be available to him. So Chase Daniel, at some point, he's going to have to stretch the field. Chase Daniel does not have the athleticism of Trubisky. So when the pocket starts to collapse, you know, he's not really able to escape it. He's not really good on the run. So most of his throws are going to be in the pocket, but he's going to need to stretch the field, take some deep shots like he did in the last game to Javon Wims, Allen Robinson. You, go, I mean, you're probably going to get Tariq Cohen on some mismatches also down the field. So Chase Daniel, he's going to have to take advantage of these. Okay, the Raiders are not going to let you get like those five, six, seven yard plays all game long. They're going to game plan for that. So you're going to have to beat them deep eventually. Oakland does not have a good passing defense. They have the 27th ranked passing defense in the NFL. So you already know some players are going to be wide open. It's on Chase Daniel to connect. And I believe he will be able to, you know, at least see them because he does. I feel like in the last game, he did show a little bit better vision than Trubisky. So he has that vision, but can he take advantage of that? Hopefully we will see. And finally, key number three, we need a monster revenge game from our team's MVP. And you already know who I'm talking about here. I don't even have to say it, man. The MVP of our team right now, Khalil Mack. We need a monster game from him, okay? He's going up against the former team that traded him. You know, the team that he loved. He loved Derek Carr. He loved Amari Cooper. He loved all his teammates. A team that kind of gave up on him because he wanted more money. I want Khalil Mack to put all of his frustration, all of his, you know, anger over that trade. I want him to put it all out on the field, okay? 
And whenever you give a guy like Khalil Mack some extra motivation, it's really, really scary because you've seen his stats on primetime, okay? I'm going to read you guys his stats on primetime when the lights are shining the brightest. In only six games, he has six sacks, seven forced fumbles. Seven. I'm not even exaggerating. He actually has seven in six games. And he has a touchdown as well, which we all know where that touchdown is from, man. So, I mean, these stats are just absolutely ridiculous. Like, you don't see this usually among even the elite players in the NFL because it's so hard to, you know, keep on getting forced fumbles, keep on getting, you know, sacks when teams are doubling, tripling you up, right? It seems like every other play, you know, Khalil Mack is either being held to, like, teams obviously... They're getting away with holding him, too, because it seems like the refs don't want to call it because if they call holding, you know, offensive lines are not going to be able to block Khalil Mack. So going up against all that I talked about to still be able to perform when the lights are the brightest, when the whole world is watching, that shows you what type of player Khalil Mack is. Khalil Mack thrives on the biggest stages. He thrives when he knows that everybody's watching. He thrives when he has that extra motivation. And in this game, you better believe he has that extra motivation. He wants to prove to John Gruden what a stupid, horrible trade he made. And he wants to show Raider Nation, you know, what what the Bears got. Because we got somebody that's really turning our team around. So Khalil Mack, he needs to have a big game in this one. He needs to show up. And I'm 100% confident that he will. I mean, it's Khalil Mack we're talking about, not some normal everyday player. So... He needs to show up. He needs to put the pressure in his old friend's face. Don't be scared of tackling your old friend. I mean, obviously, they're still good friends right now. So you maybe don't want to hit him as hard as possible, but you still have to bring him down no matter what. Still get a lot of pressure in his face. Make life really, really tough on him. And if this pass rush, pass rush as a whole you know, gets pressure into Derek Carr's face, then we are going to win this football game, right? It goes beyond Khalil Mack. Khalil Mack is obviously our superstar, but Leonard Floyd, you know, Akeem Hicks, if he's playing, you know, all the other people that, you know, rush the passer for us, they have to be able to get into his face and make life tough for Derek Carr and for some turnovers. All right, so there you have it. Those are my three keys to Bears victory. If the Bears accomplish at least two of those, right, I feel like we are going to win this game. But let me get to my score prediction now. And in London, I have... The Chicago Bears pulling out this dub by a score of 17-5. to Yeah, a wacky score to be honest, but I'm picking a score like this because first of all, man, I think it is going to be a very defensive game. I don't have our offense scoring that many touchdowns, even though the Raiders' defense is not particularly amazing, um, because I think it is going to be kind of a conservative game plan, even though Matt Nagy is really the opposite of conservative. When you have a defense playing like this, you cannot afford to take many risks, okay? You don't want Chase Daniel playing hero. You know, you want him occasionally taking some deep shots to keep the defense honest, but you don't want him, like, slinging the ball like Patrick Mahomes or anything. So if we can do this, right, just play a conservative style of offense, still score some points, obviously, score at least 17 points, then we are going to win this game because I don't see this defense allowing a touchdown to be honest this defense is so freaking good it's barely allowed any points all year it's barely allowed any yards as well I mean I don't see how the Raiders offense is going to work against it because their game plan which involves a lot of running the football is not going to work against this Bears defensive line I mean we proved that against the Vikings the best rushing attack in football when you shut that down why can you not shut down the Raiders right the Raiders obviously do have a better offensive line but I mean, Dalvin Cook, I feel like, is a better running back than Josh Jacobs right now. And although the offensive line is a huge part in the running back's success, I just think that the Bears' defensive line talent is still much more than the Raiders' offensive line talent, right? When you got guys like Khalil Mack, I mean, guys on the interior like Eddie Goldman, Roy Robertson-Harris, Nick Williams, hopefully Akeem Hicks, you cannot stop that, man. You can only hope to contain it, but... The run game, for sure, I think it's going to be shut down. And Derek Carr in the passing game, I don't think he's going to have many options because you got guys like HaHa, guys like Bojack locking things up on the back end. So there's not going to be much you know, space for Derek Carr to throw the football. I have them actually getting a field goal and a safety. Um, the safety, maybe because 
you know, it's Chase Daniel. Maybe he doesn't have a good start to the game or something. Maybe he fumbles and it becomes a safety or something. Or I, I don't know what happens, but somehow they get a safety. Um, but that's the only points I'm allowing the Raiders to have. The MVP of this game, you already know who I'm going to pick here. Khalil freaking Mack is going to be the MVP of this game in his return to facing this Oakland team that traded him away. I think he's going to be angry. I think he's going to play with his heart on the field. He's going to put everything on the line. He is going to get two sacks and two forced fumbles. I'm calling it now. Um, you know, guys, even though the Raiders are going to try to, you know, double him up, triple him up sometimes, you cannot stop Khalil Mack. Like, that's a fact. You cannot stop him. You can only hope to contain him. And I, I don't think they're going to be able to contain him either because Mack has been getting by some double teams with ease sometimes. And when you got guys like Nick Williams playing amazing, you know, guys like Leonard Floyd sometimes stepping up, um, hopefully Leonard Floyd does have a good game in this one. I mean, Mack, you, can only, you can't devote all your attention to just one player. So Mack, eventually, he is going to get through. He is going to get to Derek Carr, and he's going to make life really tough for this Raiders offense. But that wraps up my video. As always, leave your comments down below. I want to know what you guys have to say about this game, what you think the score is going to be, who you think the MVP is going to be, who you think is going to have a good game. And also, if you're going to this game, right, please leave a comment down below because I want to know, you know, which of you guys are going to this game. Um, if you are going, please have fun. I mean, it's a once-in-a-lifetime thing. Maybe not once-in-a-lifetime, but once in a lot of years thing. So enjoy it while you are there. Scream loud, you know, be loud, represent Bears Nation because you guys are a part of Bears Nation as well. Even though you guys are across the globe, you know, we love you guys as well. So be loud. I'm going to be watching this game with my tea in one hand, my crumpets in the other hand because, man, I got to have the full British experience too, just like you guys should as well. So hopefully the Bears win this. It's a big game. Hopefully we can see a club dub in a different country. That would be a first for us, but... I cannot wait for this. Again, leave your comments down below. Subscribe if you're new. Thank you for all the support. And as always, bear down.